right meow meow right meow we should have audio audio anybody audio, audio? hero let's see what's up Kristen Alex Redbeard Kevin yes Kevin we have started uh, mailbox etc just kidding mailbox 37 uh, there should be sound now, Mr. FF Shooter. Marson, <laughs> don't be spreading any more rumors. Robert. Hey, Poe. you started the original rumor, Which making me say that I was putting with guards and that yeah, I always have. What you have you seen the ad yet, y'all? Um, I not a joke. I had, I had no less than ten people at Ledgestone be like, "Are you really putting with guards now?" I knew, I knew that would happen. Yeah. All right. After the way I put it up, I mean, I, I should consider. A so Justin says, <laughs> let's go insert air horn blast. Should it be that one that goes? Wah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh, uh, John, thanks for uh, thanks for catching some of the rounds. Toe is still pretty sore. Um, it uh, certainly affected uh, affected my my play this week. But uh, yeah, got to got to just deal with what you got. Still, still played okay. All things considered, it was all right. Chaser, I uh, rarely ever eat at McDonald's. I usually just get uh, a drink before disc golf answer. Yeah, me. like literally, that's what he'll go to McDonald's drive through, get a drink, and leave. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get like like normally like I go like to the gas station uh-huh. or Starbucks to get the fancy strawberry. Yeah, I right. see, I see, I, I, I see. No, oh, okay. I say, I, I mean, acai. I've got uh, acai. 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 The lady at Starbucks said acai. Well, she didn't know anything. It's well, acai. I'm going based off what she said. Okay, I'm going to solve this anyway, right now. Anyway, and then so I would go and then, but Robert, when he says I'm going to go get some pop, he goes to McDonald's. Yeah, because. Apparently McDonald's has the best fountains. They or do. the best syrup. Oh, yeah. Is it right. any McDonald's? This does look like it's uh, exaggerating or. Uh, or uh, yeah, how about that? Uh, what's that? How would you put would you put pronounce acai? Yeah. Here, hold on. Let's do it. I can do you one better. I would go. Oh, whoops. Sorry, hold on. See? Sorry, Watch. sorry, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, here here it is. Are you ready? Acai. See? Acai. 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 Well, so I was saying even a little bit wrong, but you yeah. were saying the A at the end. No, 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 no. Isn't that what you said? I was saying acai, but acai, oh. but yeah, I was emphasizing that's the word, emphasizing the second syllable. Uh, you were putting it the I'm silly. in the wrong. Well, syllable. I, I guess it's not the syllable because it's a diphthong anyway. So you could you're you could say it's all. Part <laughs> I got of, him. You could say it's all part of the same syllable. Whatever, man. <laughs> you're part of the same syllable. Now that's fair. I am. All right, enough talk about stuff. So anyway, soda, not pop. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I've literally never called it pop. What did I did I say pop? No, I think somebody on the oh. uh, Did yeah. I say pop? Um Sometimes Let's see. Aceron says were you able to walk it off? I mean, it, enough. I, I was able to throw. I I could tell that I was that I lost a little bit of distance in general, which is bad for me cuz I don't have a lot of distance to start off with. Um and then I mean, it's just one of those things like every step you feel it. Um, and especially when you get ready to throw and especially, especially when you get ready to putt, like rolling up onto my toe, that was probably the most painful thing all weekend. Hey, Ant- and I, and I putted a lot this weekend, <laughs> many putts. Anthony, you need to go, you need to look to see if there's a water burger on our way to Colorado. The reason I spring this up is there's a debate between some of the workers here, whether water burger is better than Torchy's tacos. Now I'm not comparing the two, not the two, not like a, not like a orange, orange comparison but is Whataburger we are we already feel that talk Torchy's tacos is a good place to get some some fusion tacos right but there's a claim out here that Whataburger is the best place to get a burger now in that price range we're not talking like a fancy burger sure. so um, I think we need to film me trying a Whataburger and then comparing it to afterwards when we eat at a tor- Torchy's taco so I can show this per- it's facts it's scarlet if you ever watch the live shopping uh, with Emporia, you can go to Dynamitis Emporia on Facebook and watch their live shopping show. It's really cool. You need to watch it. You need to follow that page. You can watch it. She made a claim on Facebook that uh, she wishes a Whataburger would come to Emporia. And I was like, meh. There were none in, there were none in Colorado. 
All right, so there's none on the way, so never mind. I know Patrick Mahomes was lobbying to get one in Kansas City because he misses it from his Texas days. Yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the big deal. A couple things on the board here. Chaser says, "Will Danny be addressing the pull versus push debate that's been sweeping the form and debate pages?" Sweeping. He he doesn't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. So I, he's going to check it out he hasn't and let us swept know. his face yet. Um. Like his Buccaneers mustache. says, I met Robert at Ledgestone. Super nice. Had a full conversation. You made a fan out of me. Thank you, Buccaneers. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming to hang out, man. It's enjoyable to get to meet all the people I met out there. Uh, Tegan, I did not lose any discs at Ledgestone. Um, that's about the only thing I really did actually well out there. Um, yeah, I, I threw – over the weekend, I threw three in the water, and I got all three of them back. One of them immediately – uh, one of them, I was kind of tossing my golden retriever in, and one of the guys I was staying with, Thomas Gilbert, uh, was like, I mean, yeah, I was just tossing the golden retriever, not really paying attention to anybody else, and he just walks into the water and gets the disc. Like, had his had his socks and shoes off before I even knew what was going on. Wow. It was my Proto Explorer, so I was really happy to get it back because that's one of my favorite discs. And then the last one was a Raider on 13. I just threw it super poorly the, uh, the second round and landed in the water. And it was probably like probably 10 feet off the edge but just one shot with a golden retriever and i got it so i i uh returned with all the discs i left with it was great uh mailbox the story is that uh the sunday that i came back for um or from kansas city wide open i slipped on my stairs and landed all of my weight on my right big toe and uh it's still I mean, it's probably just sprained at this point. I thought it was broken for the for the majority of that week, but it's hurt the same regardless. Gotcha. Can't can't really walk very well on it. Um, I actually didn't use that many forehands. I only threw forehand off the tee on one hole, and it's really the only play for me. Um, and that was just as painful as a backhand because you push off of your right toe to throw forehands. But yeah, that does bring up a uh, interesting question, though. I don't know, Anthony, what's on the way from here? Because we're going, me and Anthony are heading out to Colorado for the disc golf experience at Mile High Stadium. Um, that there actually is, if you're in the uh, Colorado area, make sure you sign up. Um, it's happening this weekend, um, but there's still time. In fact, I believe we're going to take signups all the way up until uh, Friday. I think they said they're going to keep it open. Or, yeah, that sounds right. So, but uh, if you're in the area, but on the way there, if you've got a good place for us to stop and eat lunch. Uh, let us know. Maybe we'll hit it up. Yeah. Um, so Will says Whataburger sandwiches are terrible. The honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich and honey butter chicken biscuit are where it's at, and that's valid. That's the really honey good. butter chicken biscuit is fantastic. Maybe so. That's what I need to try if I want to try the best of it. Yes. Um, are any of the pros doing campaigns to save any of the retired molds? Uh, not that I know of right now. I, uh, there's, there's a couple of things in the works for some of the fan favorites that got retired, um, to maybe come back in a certain way, uh, in coming months. It's about all I can really say about it, but, um, yeah, something, something to look forward to. Uh, let's see. Are we, is any of us going to Amworlds? Are you going to Amworlds? Mm-mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody's going from Amworlds, Mr. Mark Hill. Nope. Uh, right. Dig oh. DG says this is the second stair incident for Robert. Maybe it's time for a lift. That's me or you. I, I would be, I'd be fine with it. Um, we are also, Shay and I are, um, Shay and I are buying a house. We close next Tuesday and, uh, it has stairs down to the basement, but everything's kind of on the main floor. So hopefully I'll be safe. <laughs> hopefully it was pretty rough. Um, Tegan says, did you hear that Anthony Barella lost like 10 discs? That's true. So did Calvin Heimberg. And like throwing him in the water? Mm-hmm. Oh, dang. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, there, who did? Oh, Double Garrett G lost 13. Wow. Yeah. And that sucks because like you don't just bring trash discs out to a pro tour event. Like you bring all your good discs. And so, yeah, you, you know that those are starters, ones that they care about. I do. So. When I go play tournaments, I use all my trash discs. No, you but don't. When I play a casual Come on. round, I bring all my good ones. Come on. Nick Stoley says, anybody team warden? I made a 25-footer for birdie yesterday. Nick, you are speaking to the self-appointed captain of <laughs> team warden. <laughs> Dis- disregard the skill level. Regard the hype. Regard the hype. <laughs> for, nice. for, the, for the captain. All right, so what do you think? Well, should we get into the questions? 
Uh, let's do one more here. Chaser says, I heard Isaiah Esquivel is good at the Frisbees. Can you confirm? Oh, my gosh, yes. He is the 2019 yeah. United States Amateur Match Play Championships champion. Yeah, the kid is champion. a The kid's a freak. And he puts with wardens, mind and you. He, uh, uh, we're, uh, Danny has been working on the coverage, and that should be out shortly. Yeah. You can actually watch that. There were some, some pretty good putts, pretty good pretty, throws. Um, I will not good. spoil it. Other You're, than you already I, did. Well, well, we've already posted it everywhere. So, yeah. but I won't spoil the action that happened in the oh, scores. Yeah. Oh, hey, by the way, before we go live, to uh, there's a team member coming up from Austin tomorrow, who's stopping in Oklahoma City um, and getting torches to bring to us. So, if you'd like to order something, I can send it to him. What time will they be here? Twelve thirty. They will be here at twelve thirty. I think so. Yes, I will give you my order. Okay, very good. Because uh, I have to actually leave. Uh, a little early Wednesday to go take Sebastian to... Oh, Bartlesville. Yes. Yeah, cool. Where he'll be spending the week while I am Sweet. in Colorado. Colo- Colorado. Colorado. Color. How do you say it? Colorado. It's natives to Colorado say Colorado. What did I say? Colorado. Say say how I said it? Colorado. And the natives? Colorado. It's oh, like it's like in, it's like in Finland. Remember the a that has an umlaut on top. That's a a as opposed to an a uh, or. So or I should whatever. say like like Colo- rad. Colorado. Like that's rad. Yeah. Colorado. Yep. 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 It's true. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. I only found that out by speaking to native Colorado. Did you realize you must you should have got into like language or something? Because when we did I, that little welcome to video, did you see the comments? Not really. Uh, the the comments at least two or three, maybe three, said that. Well, Yuha, Yuho, Yuha, Yuha said uh, he believes that you are Finn. Oh, Finnish. And the nice. other people were saying that out of everybody, you were the one that pronounced it the best. Sweet. I also had, like, I mean, we went over there last year, so I learned a, like a little bit of how they pronounce things. Well, sure, but. Jeremy's what, been over there more than us. That's and, fair. That's fair. For whatever reason, I know this is kind of a, like a strange quirk, but like, if I hear something, it's pretty easy for me to, me to replicate quickly. <laughs> No, I don't want to do that. Oh, but uh, but like, but as Prove far, it. but as far as languages and those sorts of things go, um, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> then I don't believe you anymore. <laughs> no, no, it's not like it's not like a. That's what you said. If you hear it, you can replicate no, it. No, no, like a like a. If somebody says a word to me in a different language, it's pretty like not easy, but it's easier for me, I think, than some to say it back to them correctly. Can you trill your R's? Yes. <laughs> Shay can't. Arroz con pollo. Shay, Shay, Shay's just sounds like, uh, like D. D, 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 D. <laughs> it's hilarious. Like a, like in slow motion. She can't do it and it kills her and I laugh at her. By the way, did you know she listens to our show? Shay. Yeah. She told me. I did. She yes. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. she was like, I learned so much context around your all's lives. Yeah. <laughs> I there that you was go. Funny. So, and I said, uh, that's, this, that's with all our listeners. They know what's going on in our lives. Yeah, we got so, some bros on here. We appreciate that. All right. So and let's lady get- bros. Oh, dude, do you remember there was a listener named Honey Bear a while ago whose wife loved to watch disc golf but wouldn't play disc golf? Yes. I met them at Ledgestone this weekend. Really? I sat down in le- the little VIP area. They were sitting and watching. I was just done with my round, so I just went and sat down because right. there was Cokes over there. And uh, they're like, hey, man, love the show. I said, thanks. And he was like, hey, you remember the guy, Honey Bear? I was like, yeah, that was them. That's it was awesome, awesome dude. That okay, so cool. I'm sorry. I've, I've taken too much time. Yes, you have. Deepest apology. All right, we got the recording going. So uh, if you notice, uh, Eric McCabe is not here. He is uh, on assignment doing something else. Pickleball is dope, by the way. Um, so that sounded like Chewbacca. Am I trilling the R's or the da 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 da? That's what sounded like Chewbacca. All right, you ready? We're going to get into the questions. Yes. <clears throat> Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Disc Golf Answer Man. I am Bobby Cool, that is Slick Breeze. <laughs> and I have with me Robert McCarr. <laughs> ah, we were so earlier before we started recording, we were on YouTube talking, and, and Robert claims that if he hears a sound or someone talking, he can replicate it. I put him to the test. Well, yeah, because he, he couldn't made, do the sound. He made a stupid sound. I'm saying like words. Like if I hear a it language, it was a word. It's easy, like in a, a different language. No, that was not a word. It's not. This isn't Dothraki, okay? <laughs> no, but like if if somebody like I think it's easier for me to pick out like accents or whatever because of this. So like if somebody is from um, like Australia as opposed to New Zealand, I feel like I have an easier time picking that out than most people. 
like catching little tiny things uh, for whatever. I don't know why. Are you going to pursue a career in that? I would love to be a, uh, what do they call them? Polyglot. That's the person who knows lots of languages. Yeah, that, I would love for that to be me. <laughs> but that ship There's has a lot of that going on on LinkedIn. Uh huh. Looking for poly, uh, poly dude, in, international gods. businesses look for polyglots all the time. All right. Anyway, we're, <laughs> we're kind of an international business, so I mean, I basically made it. <laughs> <You> made it. <laughs> so Eric McCabe is not here; he's on assignment. So it's just me and Robert McCall mm-hmm. here to tickle your ears with disc golf questions and more. Yeah. Um. And also random facts about ourselves. <laughs> random facts about ourselves. So Robert is back from Ledgestone, played out in, in uh, Peoria, Illinois, the yeah. site of the 2019 Pro Worlds, which all of us will be there in about uh, a couple months. But Robert, tell us real quick the elevator pitch of how your weekend went in Ledgestone. Um, I did one thing. Thanks, Robert. I was only going <laughs> to the cool. second floor. So, <laughs> no, I did one thing well at Ledgestone, and that was staying in bounds. For the most part, I ended up tied for seventh in the field for OB rate. And that was, I went OB seven times. Whoa. That was seventh in the field, mind you. Um, Most everything else I just did average to bad. Um, I threw average for the most part. I putted pretty bad, especially for myself. Um, Inside circle one, I missed way too many putts for for, uh, it to be a good finish for me. But um, made made a few outside the circle putts. My circle two percentage was pretty good. and I finished tied for 53rd, uh, which was a few strokes into the cash, like five or six or something like that. I uh, made like 400 bucks. So it was a fun week. I averaged around 10.06, um, but just honestly didn't play that great. I lucked out with a tee time my first day. Um, I had pretty calm weather the entire first round. The second and third rounds uh, really, really windy, and I, I had a hard time playing in that. Had I gone off in the morning, it was calm, and – much in, later in the afternoon it was calm, but that's just – it's just a crapshoot with tea time sometimes. So tried my best. Didn't play that great, but it was fun. Got to hang out with some of our team players and, uh, yeah, see some people. Excellent. I uh, – let's see. I got to play some disc golf on Friday. We had – what? <laughs> Sorry. Doc says putting problems – was because I hurt the warden's feelings by making by right, making that part, video. Yeah. It's true. Oh no! It was what was I, what I was going to ask is I know that in years past that the Ledgestone uh, event was uh, ridiculed or at least the talk was all the fake OB and the manufactured OB with the lines and stuff. Was it the same or did they, same exact course? Same exact course. Just people just now are used to it, I guess. Yeah. the The thing about it is like I don't think the OB is unfair. It's just difficult. It's it, like it reminds me some of the country club. There. Are, it's really easy to find OB if you get a little bit loose with your tee shots or your approaches or something like that. Um, all the shots are attainable. If you went to play for only par on every hole, you, you, for the most part, you could do that. Um, yeah, it's just it's just difficult. They're tied OB, not unfair, just hard. And then, of course, congratulations to Paige Pierce for yeah. winning out there. How many did she win by? She won by two. two. By two. She had yeah. She in kind of dramatic fashion. She had uh, Katrina was just outside her. Uh, on the 18th green, both of them in circle two. And um, Katrina kind of gave like a half run at the basket, but it didn't really look like uh, she was trying to make it too much. So Paige could lay up and put in and uh, and win, right, by one. Yeah. So instead of that, she just made it. She jammed it. Yeah, which was it's like – on Instagram. Probably a questionable run in my opinion. I think I, I think they had a little bit of a headwind. And it looked like she wasn't really like full on running it like she normally does. I think she was trying to lay up and it just lifted nicely. Truly. You think? Yes. I think she was just trying to lay it up there softly and it just went in and she was like, well, cool. Oh, that's, that's, that's kind of. Yeah. I, I, I haven't. That, that's, that's, that's personal that is opinion. Not confirmed. Yeah. That's, that's a guess. I'll, I, I could see her running it because she's an extremely aggressive player. Right. That's uh, when I saw it. It didn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Or I didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Uh, because there are a lot of times where it's like me and you or me and somebody and, and it's a huge putt and it's for, you know, the big pressure putt and everybody's like, Oh my God, don't do it. Don't page. She's going to do it. I know she is. Cause that's Paige. Yep. So, and then, yeah, she, she straight up did it. And then Paul McBeth went in on the uh, men's side. He did some ridiculous things this weekend. I now, mean, didn't Ricky make a big push? I thought he I did. Him. Yeah, that's. I, I texted a couple of friends and said, like, imagine a world where you shoot 1070 rated golf and lose four strokes to a competitor because that's what happened to Paul. That's crazy. Second round, wild. Ricky, Ricky beat the course record. Um, I think he shot f- 14 under or 13 or something, something crazy like that. Um, 
But in the end, Paul held it out by, I think, four or something. And just he, he he's just playing on another level right now. Got to watch it in Kansas City. He just shredded those courses and looks like he's getting really comfortable with his setup. And if you haven't seen it already, Joe Mez put up a video of him pretty much parking a hole that's 450 feet. Granted, it's in a tailwind, maybe the slightest bit downhill, but like the dude threw a putter on that hole and parked it. All right, so Ace Run Productions, thank you so much for the super chat. We really appreciate it. We're going to have to go out and buy Robert some Tiger Bomb. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ace Run. I, I appreciate you allocating that money toward my personal well-being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say uh, also is that I actually got to play some disc golf myself. On Friday, me and Anthony got to go out to play a flex C, uh, XC tier that was happening oh, yeah. at Hammond Park. Now, it's an XC tier because uh, we've worked it out because it's a nine-hole course. So we worked it out to where we could where each player throws twice. So you play uh, each hole twice, but you play it. The, you don't go around and play. You just throw You just twice. go once through. Yeah. Two, and, two shots on each hole, two putts on each hole, all that. Yeah, and so uh, I was able to squeak out an 850-50 rated round, which is good for me because I'm... 850 what? 855. Let's go. Right? Isn't that what it was? I think that's what it was. Dude, good for you. I didn't know yeah. about that one. Yeah, so good on Dude, me. Dude, I'll high-five that. Yeah. Sick, man. Then the B tier. Now, what for the uh, Amateur Match Play Championships, which you had, we just had this weekend, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting weekend. Um they had a eliminators B tier. So if you come up uh, Friday to play all the brackets and you get eliminated, uh, we we understand you made all that way. You made that trip to come out to Emporia to battle it out, and now you have no battle to battle. But we say come play the B tier, maybe get a chance to win some uh, some prizes there. So I play. I was able to play that. Didn't do so good round one. Only got a 782 rated round. But my uh, second rounder is rated eight twenty, so that's that. Mm, that okay. worked out okay. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's the update on my. So road you'll get a little to, bump from that weekend. Yeah. So my uh, road to eight fifty. So hopefully, I get to play some more. What do you say we get to the questions, Robert McCall? Let's do it. I'm going to hit record. The reason I'm going to hit record is because I record the video, and then I make little segments on here, little chunk size video clips of just the question and the answer. And if you just want to go back and look at past questions just on YouTube, find DGAM clips. And that's all they are. Two to five minute clips of questions from the past. So um, and you, if you go to that page, I believe you can kind of search on it and you can kind of find certain subjects and stuff like that. So, all right. Recording has started and we are going to start the questions. This first one is from Charlie. What would you think about the PDGA setting requiring I think that was too many words. Setting requiring players to play in a certain division based on the rating. I mean, that's kind of what they do now, but here's the scenario that brought up this question. Okay. At my local A tier, the highest rated intermediate player is only rated two points lower than the highest rated advanced player. Would a role like this make the decisions more fair and competitive? So let, let me see if I understand this correctly. So, it'd be like if the highest rated advanced player was 935 and the highest rated intermediate player was 933. What you're saying is could the PDGA give the option to TDs to say, well, since you're rated higher than the rest of your field, you should, you should play advanced. If so, then I disagree with that because, because that's, that's the reason that ratings are set in place the way that they are. Like if a person is rated 934 or below, they can play an intermediate as long as they want to. Um, assuming that their rating stays in there. You can call them a bagger all you want. You can say that they're better. They should move up. It is their prerogative to play what they want to play. So, um, yeah, I don't think the PDGA would ever put any mandate on that person to move up and, unless they just change the limits for everybody. Right. So, sorry, man. Play hard and try and beat that person. Play hard. Play better. I mean, I, I, there's, a, there's something like that happening at Junior Worlds this year. The highest rated... Amateur in the uh, men's under 18 field is Trenton Higley, and he's, I think, 978 or 979. And there, Gannon Burr, who is uh, a former MJ15 world champion, um, is rated 980, but he's in the MJ15 field now. Like, would he have to move up? I don't think so. I don't think so. So there you go. All right, we're going to move over to Speak Pipe. Remember, if you guys want to send in your voice, because we love hearing your voices, uh, if you want to send in a voicemail, uh, question you can do that over at uh, discoffangeman.com this one's from Jonas get ready Jonas 
Hey, Disc Golf Fans, Man Crew, Robert the Hair McCall, Eric the Truth McCabe, and Bobby Cool Daddy Slick Breeze. This is Jonas from Hastings, Nebraska, and I was just out playing disc golf. I've been playing for about two years, and I recently uh, realized that my West Side King, I used to be able to throw it really flat, and it would go fairly straight, and then it would be my really big distance driver. I could reach right around 400 with it. And now I realize when I try and push it really straight and I throw it with the same power that I used to, or at least it feels like the same power, that it is turning way right and is really understable. And so I'm wondering what discs should I get if I am turning my king over a lot and I'm turning my sheriff over just a very little bit to the right. So I'm wondering what disc is in between those that I can throw that'll stay really straight for those long distance shots. Um, love what you guys are doing. I love, I listen to your new podcast. Anytime I'm in the car driving anywhere, uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Thank you. What you got, uh, Robert? Um, if you're, if your King is turning too much now, uh, probably something that you want to look at is one of two discs that I think are just a little bit up in stability from the King. And that would be the sheriff is the first one that I'd recommend. I think the sheriff is very close to the speed of the King, but maybe just a touch more stability. Um, and then the other one would be a trespass. I think it's going to be even slightly more stable than the, than the sheriff, depending on the ones that you get. I think they might be pretty close, but the slower speed allows you to control it a little bit better. So I would check out either the sheriff or the, um, trespass. You might also just get a new King and see how that works, but that's what I would say. There you go. You know what? I pulled out of my bag, uh, for, I only threw it maybe one time though for the B tier was my air trespass. Mm -hmm. I was looking for trespasses to put in my bag and I found the air when I put it in there. Hmm. 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 Next one is from Trevor. In a recent hmm. tournament, my disc came to rest at the bottom of a crevice where a large rock had split. We're going to add sound effects now. <laughs> we, we need our soundboard. Yeah. Uh, I tried to reach down the crevice to tr retrieve my disc. That's reaching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I could not reach it. I marked my lie behind the split in the rock above where my disc was resting in the crevice without penalty. My card mates agreed. Since I could see my disc but could not retrieve it was this played correctly should there been been a penalty stroke added how should this have been handled you got <laughs> i like your uh, your questions yeah, inflections yeah inflections. In, inflections uh no you played that correctly um i would play this just like if you're playing a course with a lot of tall trees and the two meter rule rule was not in effect if you throw one into the top of a tree you mark directly below it you play it even if you can't get the disc back you don't get a penalty stroke, assuming that the two meter rule isn't in effect. Same thing goes for this. Just because you can't retrieve your disc doesn't mean you get a penalty stroke. There you go. There you go. All right, next one. We'll go back to speak pipe. This is run fourth run. What's up, disco fans, man? This is Benny Mipeson Benny. from Benny. Finland, and my question is about runs. Okay, today I was wondering about different runs of different discs and really couldn't find information online about the runs that which are the ones currently on the stores or somewhere where I can purchase them. So this would be nice information. I know there's a lot of people that think this is relevant information because we all know that there's some differences between different runs. Of course, Latitude 64 is the most consistent plastic producer and compared to other manufacturers it's a lot more consistent between the runs but of course it changes and differs between the runs like for example we all know that fusion plastic is more gummier and creepier than before when creepier? it was okay. a lot harder and slicker so we would like to know that information at least i would like to know that information so if you can publish it via your newsletter or social media somewhere that Right now, we're publishing the fourth run of the Fusion Defender or something. Appreciate it. I hope you have fun and enjoy the summer. Cheers. So I get what you're wanting to do. Uh, there are some challenges on our part, obviously, because 
Latitude 64 is the factory that makes it. And so, and they are in different time zones than us. So we would know, and the way that they, their, their, uh, the pro manufacturing process happens, it's, it is not like they clock in at eight in the morning, they run a batch of defenders, they clock at it five, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Right? They've got several machines over there making discs. And they're all making certain ones. Now, obviously, I'm sure they know, okay, we're going to make so many defenders. And then once that's done, we're going to make so many captains. And then that's done, they're going to make so many explorers and stuff like that. So I, I'm not saying that they're just a disorganized mess. But I just don't know that, that we would be able to. Now, we've thought about different ways of doing that. That's actually been a subject mm -hmm. uh, we've had in some of our meetings of how do we let people know. So... I think we're still kind of in the stages of figuring that out, but that might, something similar yeah. like that might happen. Yeah, the the old cliche we're always working on something is actually applicable in this setting. Right. This is something those that things run. We are talking and thinking about in nonstop. a certain way that maybe you'll see, or maybe you never will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it may but, benefit you for the rest of your life, or it may or not. you may never hear about it ever yeah. again. Uh, next one is from Tommy. What is the difference between a flat top disc and a disc with a slight dome of the same mold? Oh, I think you meant mold. Mm, yes, fair. Um, or if you pronounce it should, would, or mold, mood. <laughs> should, would, or mood. Yeah, the should, same mood. Could, would, mood, and should. <laughs> it does kind of look like that now that you say that. Um, so it really depends on the disc, right? Um, I think... The thing that is more important to a disc flight than its dome is the height of the parting line. The parting line is where the top and bottom portions of the mold meet. And generally, the higher that line is, the more overstable that disc is, generally. Um, and it just so happens that most of the time, especially in distance drivers, things with thicker rims, um, the parting line height is higher on discs that have a little bit more dome. So they tend to be more overstable than flat ones. Um, they tend to have a, a little bit more glide and maybe more of a consistent um, fade instead of flat discs. Like if you think of um, like a, a Domi Defender versus a flat Defender, the Domi one in general is probably going to be a little bit more overstable, um, but it's going to be kind of consistent throughout that flight. Whereas the flat one will be straighter a little bit out of the box, but kind of dive more to the left. Um, I don't know. It's just it's really interesting the way that that works out. I certainly don't know all of the details of that, but that's uh, that's what I've gathered over the years. Parting line height is actually more important than the uh, than the dome. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Next question comes from John. Hey there, Bobby and Robert. This is John from Colorado. Uh, thank you very much for taking my questions. Uh, first off, uh, I was at GBO this year, and it was an incredible experience. I really enjoyed myself, and I want to thank you guys for. Uh, putting it together with everyone over there at Dynamic, uh, probably. Thank you for coming, John. Best tournament that could ever be run. We agree. Um, I was also in the line to buy a few of the Auto X peers. Uh, I actually think Bobby probably has me in some of his coverage of his fake charge the door uh, video <laughs> that he took. It was not fake. That was completely. I was overwhelmed and boggled, and I had to go see therapy for that. Um, and to be completely honest, the disc has been absolutely incredible. It's the best. Uh, it's the best driving putter I've ever thrown, um, and it really makes me regret only buying three of them. Um, so my question is, why is there such a limited run of them, and uh, what will it take to get an additional run of the Opto X Uh Thank you very much, and I hope you guys have a great day. What say you? Why is there only a limited run? God bless you, Danny. A limited run of a certain discs. What was it he was talking about, the Opto X Opto X Pure, yeah. <sighs> I don't know if technically they just the plastic is just not of an abundance. In other words, I mean they have to source these plastics, they have to find out these plastics. They have a company they buy these plastic beads from and as you can imagine they buy a lot of plastic. Well, some of that plastic isn't uh, when they make it or when they tell us that we can buy it, they don't it's not the same as the other plastics where it's in abundance where they make it all the time. So that causes uh, the the limited for us, and then of course we turn around and make them limited because we want to keep them special. I'll just keep it real. Yep. I'm gonna keep it real. 
we make things some of the things we make limited because we want to make for make sure they're special because they need to be special just like the loose now hold that now think about this the lucid x for our players are limited because we want to make sure that they that the players you have a reason to buy those now they are good discs they're nice stiffer plastic some people like that they're a little more stable they like the flight of it um but it's part of that is to take care of our players so that people will want to buy those was that too real no, I think that's good. Did I good. keep it too real? I think that's good. Will I have a job after the show? Probably not. Okay. Um, there is, uh, but there's definitely truth to the fact that um, the Lucid X raw material, like the yes. plastic, is just harder to get a hold of. That's that's just part of it. So that's another reason that they come out in limited runs. Yeah. See, someone said MVP has the same issue with their fusion plastic. It's super popular. Fission. But a uh, fission. Huh? I, fission. That was one of those where you read. You know, it's like you yeah. don't. You just automatically. You're just used to seeing fusion. Your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a rare blend. So it just that's just the way it is. Yep. Do 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 yeah. do do. That's just the way it is. Spending time, spending time, spending time. That's how we'd sing with the kids. I don't know the words. Dude, things will never be the same. They will never be the same. Do 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 do. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next question comes from Brendan. I putt with an Electron Soft MV, but want to switch to dynamic, a dynamic putter. Brendan, you have made an excellent choice, and I commend you. What would be a similar feel in the hand? I have never felt an Electron MV, so I'm going to Google it real quick. Danny has an uh, input. He, Danny says shield. Uh, which plastic would be good? Soft shield. Oh, he did he say says. soft. So a soft BT is it BT for shield? BT soft, yeah. BT soft shield. There you go. Yeah, it looks like the envy is. You will thank us later. Relatively overstable, and I think yeah, the shield fits that very well. Excellent. Micro bead. Guys, remember. Okay, so we just talked about uh, match play for singles bracket, but we still have doubles bracket happening right now. So make sure you go to discoffmatchplay.com. Check for the information. We have TDs applying to run the brackets in their area. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to run a bracket in your area, make sure you signed up. If you just want to play, because you know what's in the players pack, a gold burst pioneer from latitude 64 and give me that, that biofusion raider really give me that really give me that i almost don't i just want to i think i'm going to just sign up to get the biofusion knowing i'm probably going to lose my first bracket i'll play with you i'll lose if we just average our ratings we're below we're below <laughs> 969 anyway it, get signed up. it counts go to oh thank you uh, uh danny so for your YouTubers, you can actually see this is a Gold Burst Pioneer. And I've heard Feels these are nice. pretty pretty darn overstable. Biofusion Raider. I was throwing my Raider the other day. I, oh, uh, yeah. So the Biofusion, I expect it to be way less overstable. And it's only like barely less overstable. It's a really good stability. It bombs for me. I like it. Nice. So you can get that. Uh, if you sign up to be a TD, you also have the opportunity to purchase 16 Moonshine Guards. Robert's new putter Ooh. of choice. That's not based off latest uh, fake news. Fake news. Um, so yeah. Anyway, you get sick. You have the opportunity to purchase up to sixteen moonshine guards. Now, what do you? What What are those for? Well, if you want to raise funds to advertise your brackets, if you want to raise funds for uh, things that you do Ooh. in a club, or if you just want to have them and make a little bit of money, uh, you can run brackets. Uh, there, obviously, go to discoffmatchplay.com for all the details and stipulations. But uh, you can do that, and then this be ready. Feels good. The guard. The yes. Moonshine guard. Yeah. Like really good, and then be ready come July when the brackets will start uh, playing. So make sure you get signed up. There. And women's doubles is happening right now. Women's doubles, yes, you can sign up for that as well. So we added the women's division for the doubles bracket. Yes. So if you got some ladies that are in your area that are anxious to play some match play, uh, make sure you get them signed up yes. as well. And speaking of, my wife texted me the other day and was like, Robert. Well, she said mayday, mayday, you know, because that's what she does sometimes. Right, right. She said, Jackie Morris asked me to be her partner for the doubles match. Get play. out. So she like, so after work, she said, will you go practice putting with me? Yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Come you on, must, man. You must have been, I married the right yeah, woman. Yeah, this is, let's, let's just call it a W. Yeah. Chalk, chalk it up for a win there. That's awesome. Hey. Um, so yeah, so Jackie Morris is actually pretty good. So they could be uh, mm -hmm. two people to be contended with. Yeah. All right, let's head back to the questions. This one's from Anonymous. Hey, Bobby, Eric, and Robert. This is John from Colorado again, and I'd like to thank you again for taking my questions. Oh, I already played that one. My bad. This one's from Michael. Michael. Would you rather be feared or loved? 
that's the only question. <laughs> uh, I'll take loved. I'm going to have to start screening these. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Uh, Would I rather uh, be feared or loved? Well, I like the old saying that I hear from Gary Vaynerchuk, and that is, and I'm sure other people, obviously other people have said it, but you can get a lot more done with honey than you can vinegar. Yeah, I'll take loved. So I'll take loved. Yeah. Although, after watching Breaking Bad, I'm down to two more, two more, no, three more episodes. Tell me that you were impressed by my... Okay, so here's the setting. Here's the scenario. This was, a, this was also a win. I had like uh uh not yesterday but the day before I had watched an epi- the episode of Breaking Bad. He'd been going back through it. Yeah, I, seen yeah, it all I've, yeah, I've already seen it, but I just this, it was, I like watching series like that where you kind of I can play in the background while I'm doing dishes or something like that because I already know kind of what's going on, but I can pay attention to the really tense part, intense part. Anyway, um the the scene where uh Hank had already figured out or was starting to really figure out that Walter, his brother in law, was the mastermind, the Heisenberg. Swear. Just kidding. And uh, and uh, 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 Walter was confronting him in Hank's garage, and they had, of course, uh, like a super intense scene. They're back and forth, and at one point, Hank, at one point, right at the ending, right before they cut it off, Hank said, "I don't. It's like I don't even know you anymore. Well, maybe it should have been a commercial. No, he said something to the effect is. of, "I don't know who you are, or I'm not even sure who I'm talking to." And Walter says, "Well, with knowing that, if yeah, if you don't know who you're talking to, to my advice, my advice would be to tread, tread lightly. lightly." Okay, yeah. so I'd watch that. What what's today? Tuesday. I'd watch that Sunday. Monday, yesterday, Robert came over to borrow a tape measure, and I had just started playing the next episode, which. It's pretty much starts right there at that point where Walter's leaving Hank's garage. And it just shows Hank standing in the garage. Robert sees what's on my TV and says, "He just said tread lightly, huh?" Yes, <laughs> I was like, what? "It was sick. It was one of my best, like not photographic memory, but that sort of thing. Like I know what that's from." I even said, "How did you? How did you know that?" And he Got said, him, "And he dude. was like the garage." Scene, it was an iconic. Lightly. It yeah, was an biggest... iconic scene. Like tread lightly was like, "Holy crap, this yeah. guy!" Is, oh, it was an intense scene. I mean, bad to yeah, the bone. Yeah, that was that's a good show. Yes. Anyway, sorry. But speaking speaking of uh, these guys on the message board or on the chat are nailing it. Um, the to the person who said, "Would you rather be feared or loved?" Oh yeah, what quote from the Office. Michael says, "Easy. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me." That's right. I yes. So, but instinct took over, and we were talking, thinking disc golf. Yes, yes. Well played to everybody in the chat who nailed it. Yes. Uh, I met <laughs> nice. Robert Collins. Five dollar super chat. Thank you so much. I met RM at Ledstone this past weekend. I would never say this to his face, but he's a class act. Yeah, yes, why, please don't say why, it to his face. Why, why wouldn't you tell her? But she is a very good person <laughs> and a talented artist. Yeah. Why wouldn't you say that to her <laughs> face? <laughs> Joey, thanks so much for the super chat, man. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. And um, since my face isn't here, I will say thank you for uh, for the compliment. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. All right. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, man. Where are we at? We have to be afraid lost of track. We are off the rails. Let's go back to Speak Pipe. This is from Shane. Let's get it. What's up, Bobby Cool Daddy Slick Breeze? I like it. Nice one. Eric, I'm on a boat in the cave and Robert, all 23 flavors in the call. Got a question Dr. for Dr. you. Pepper. So let's just say somebody designed this spinning wheel. And on the spinning wheel, it said things like forehand, backhand, roller, overhand. And you were to take some of the top touring pros and put them on a course where they'd never seen it before. And then have them spin the wheel to dictate what kind of throw they would have to throw. This might mean that you have a right-handed forehand throw on a, uh, let's just say, uh, a hole that dog legs, dog legs to the left. Not the right throw that you would want to throw on that, but you just have to do it. You have to figure out how to make it work. Which touring pros do you think would fare the best in this uh, kind of gameplay, I guess you would say? I know a lot of them go out to these courses early and uh, run through it a couple times. That way, when the tournament comes, they kind of already have an idea of what they're going to throw on what hole. So if you were to kind of just throw this in there, like, hey, congratulations, you have to throw a, uh, a forehand putter off the tee pad to this dog leg left 600 foot hole who do you think's going to come out on top who do you think would come out in the uh, media team there dynamic disc my money is on bobby yeah let's go wait 50 baby all come on. day let's come on go. all right guys keep it real <laughs> nice one and you got a little bit of the uh, directions that he was getting from his phone at the end also so uh, yeah 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 um Okay, as far as touring players go, I think you got to think of kind of like the top three guys in our sport right now, Paul, Ricky, Eagle. 
all three of them fantastic forehand fantastic backhand great rollers i mean i don't i don't know how you say that they wouldn't be super good at all those things because they um they're very well uh, rounded players some people that you might not think of who are great at forehand backhand especially a couple of guys on our team unfortunately they're both lefties and i don't really like to give them credit ever because you know lefties but um zach melton and chris clemens are both very very good backhand and forehand players clemens throws his forehand probably longer than i throw my backhand not a joke he crushes it um but then here's a sleeper of someone who i think would be really good at this especially if it included throwing with your offhand and that's zachariah johnson um guy from missouri he's been on tour this year zach i've watched him throw righty backhand righty forehand both of which he does extremely well but the dude pimps a left-hand backhand it's incredible like i've watched him throw it 400 pretty consistently it's it's gross so yeah that's my nod my nod goes to him for sure yeah um not just i'm gonna it just it was interesting when you said the top three players in the world just said mcbeth wysocki and eagle um and actually matt Oram is num- ranked number three in the world rankings yeah that takes into account different things oh, okay yeah that's what i was wondering i was, I was looking at it and looking at the different adjustments i thought well maybe that takes in something different yeah th- that's more of the the top three is ratings wise but also um just kind of the the common knowledge of if those four guys show up to an event i'm i'm taking my money that those three will beat matteo more often than not and it's not that matteo is not a good player sure. he's an incredible player it's super talented it's just that those i think are the three best players in the world right now gotcha all right next question comes from kenny if you were strapped for time before a tournament and had to choose between putting warm-up or throwing up no i'm saying throwing warm-up <laughs> gosh leave out one word and it changes everything yeah. uh if you had to choose between putting warm-up and throwing warm-up which one would you choose and why and um i, don't I know. would what say would you say i me for me just pro- this is maybe my my uh showing my age i would say throwing warm up because i got to get my body warmed up i got to get my yeah. muscles warmed up and so throwing to me wakes up your muscles and wakes up your body more than putting um and and so i you know obviously you can mess up on both if you're not quite warmed up, but to me, to get your body moving, get the blood flowing, get the you know the muscles moving, I think that's more sure. uh, a, more of a benefit than putting. I think I would take putting, um, mostly because I just did it really bad the last couple of weekends. Yeah, but that's just that's the thing that is the touchiest to me. You know, like uh, that makes that's a good point. Yeah, I, th- I think I would just rather feel warmed up putting than could than it almost driving. could it almost be kind of like what you said a circumstantial in other words like mm-hmm. man the last right. the last tournament my timing was just way off so I really got to get that dialed in before I head out on the course definitely or, or you know my putting was just I kept hitting t- to the left and I kept bound you know kept spitting out I got to get that dialed in yeah um, I will say though I go out of my way to make sure that I get to the course with plenty of time before any sure. tournament starts the only time that I showed up really actually late like I, I was i heard two minutes as i got out of my car shay and i just got caught in traffic and construction and there was literally nothing we could do where what, what tournament was it a big big tournament it was a b tier it was in oh, okay. uh, louisville oh, I gotcha. um i was on like the i think i was on the second card and i shot my definitely my worst not worst rated but worst in general tournament round i've ever shot gotcha. i got beat by 18 that round whoa of course the the dude who did it shot 10 90 something Travis Powell, I'll never forget getting beat by 18, and mine was like 905. <laughs> it hurt. All right, next one is from, or what, how much we going, how long have we been going? Um, we're doing pretty good. I think we've been on oh, for yeah, not for real long. half an hour. All right, maybe. this one is from Team Judge Player Seth. What's going on, Bobby? Cool, wait for it. That is Slick Breeze, Legend, Robert, for Mr. McCall, oh. and the one and only Eric McCabe. I've been playing for about a year now, and in my last tournament, I was able to play a 948 rated round. Let's go. And then in my second round, I played a 789. Uh, That was actually due to, in the last three holes, I made a mistake and on each one of those holes and ended up going double bogey on all three, costing me the win and actually dropping me down into fifth place. 
Ooh, ouch. What my question is, is I'm wondering what are some tips and some ideas to help improve that consistency? Probably stop playing. Just give up. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh my God. Don't even listen to the Disc Golf Podcast anymore. <laughs> You're off the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Here we go. My rating right now is 809, and I'm really trying to drive that up. And where I am able to play 948 r- rated rounds, uh, I've played rounds with the same score on same and similar courses. And I'm really just looking for ways to build that consistency. Uh, that way, my rating itself doesn't suffer, uh, mainly because I make stupid mistakes like that. Uh, any help really would be fantastic. Uh, and thanks, guys. Sweet. I mean, the Go most ahead. basic general advice I would, based on just don't give up. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not much else to say other than that. Um, consistency really comes with practice, right? The everyone's it's rare that you're going to go to a course for a tournament and shoot a hot round and then shoot that same hot round again. That's pretty rare. Um, sometimes people do it, but very rarely have I gone and shot like a super hot round and then done the exact same the next round. Uh, sometimes you get better, sometimes you get a little bit worse, but that really just comes with experience, with knowing what it feels like to be in that moment. Um, I think that I've seen people who are really, really good players who don't know how to win because they haven't been in the situation enough to do so. Like they may be rated, you know, 980 or something, but not have very many wins because they don't know what it feels like to battle it out and to succeed in that situation. And the only way you can really do it is just by being in the situation more often. Um, the way that you get there is just by putting in work in the, in the practice field and, uh, Mm -hmm. and on the course, making sure that everything is to the best of your ability, as good as it can be before you go to a tournament. That's what I'd say. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. Next question comes from Dean. I was playing a casual round by myself a day after some rain. So everything was still a little slick. A little cool daddy slick breeze. <laughs> I was throwing right hand, forehand approach shot, and the instant that my hand went from moving backward to moving forward, the inertia of the disc coupled with its wetness overcame my soft approach grip and slipped out. Dang it, man. The disc landed maybe three feet close to the basket, but it was about 20 feet to the right of where I had been standing. <laughs> How should this be scored? Does it count as a stroke since it was since it was closer? Okay, hold on. So the disc slipped out, but oh. like while you were trying to throw it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're making a throwing motion, then it's, yeah. It's, and it it's travels. Your thro- it's your throw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what did they say? Right? I think it's I think it's five meters where if you're tossing a disc back to your bag or just kind of tossing it out of the way, they say, if you're not trying to make a throwing motion, that's it. But I, it really comes down to intent. If you're intending to throw it, even if it doesn't travel very far, um, then that's a throw. Uh, I mean, I'll put myself on blast. I had one at the Piney Woods Open in the mine that we did where I was off in the woods, tried to throw a forehand roller through this gap, or uh, I, I should have thrown a forehand roller, tried to throw a like a little short backhand through this gap, and it hit a tree and went behind me. Okay, well, that's a throw. So, I mean, total, it probably only traveled like 15 feet, maybe even less. But, I mean, I was very much trying to throw it, so yeah, yeah that's a throw. I believe didn't they change that rule of distance? You said five meter. I thought didn't it used to be something? Was that did it used to be it something? Less. It was less, and now it's five meter. Yeah. All right. So simplify, Todd. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to speak pipe. Uh, first, what do we all? Okay, trilogy challenge. Now I know we talk about trilogy challenges a lot, mm-hmm. uh, but I wanted to make sure people uh, remember that because there are still quite a bit of events happening for the trilogy challenge. Go to trilogychallenge.com. Go to event locations. Um, 272 events in 42 states and eight countries uh, so far. You still have time to sign up if you want to run one. You can actually use it to uh, raise funds for your course, for your club, your organization, or uh, just to uh, have some extra moolah for yourself and to help build the disc golf community in your area. Uh, I played in the, uh, just recently, I played in the New Life Church, Christian Church, and the gentleman was raising funds to help the tee pads to improve them, right? Or to. Yep. Something. I think to put tee pads in. Oh, to put more tee pads in. So, yeah. So, uh, you can use that money to help raise funds to do that. Uh, what weekend is coming up? This is June 25th or June 26th. Let's see who all's got one happening this upcoming weekend. That's a bunch of them. That's awesome. 
So that would be the, this weekend, right? Yep, Ohio, Arkansas, Wisconsin, Texas, Ohio, New Hampshire, Tennessee, New York. Can you do a New York? New York. Uh, not not well enough to do it on the show. Yeah, Texas, Eric, Eric, Aragon. Aragon. Oh. <laughs> Aragorn. Oregon. Aragorn. California. Oregon. Oh, there's one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, man, I'm going to be gone. Dang it. Next time. Oh, and McClure. McClure's pretty good, pretty fun course. Right here. It's a pretty fun course. Have you ever played any of the... Aragorn. <laughs> Have you ever played in Aragorn? Uh, Have you ever played in Tulsa? Nope, zero times. Never? Nope. Never I'm telling it. you, dude. One weekend I want where to. we don't, we need to go. I'm interested to Tulsa and play uh, some of the hawk courses, uh, red, red, red hawk, black hawk, uh huh, mm-hmm. and uh, and then either Hunter or McClure. I'm interested, man. I've got a, I've got There's a the torches. We could do lunch and dinner. Come on, I've got a uh, really good friend from college who's in Tulsa that I would love to visit. So that'd be awesome. When we go, we'd have to go to Tulsa. If you know where that song comes, where that comes from, where that song goes, to Tulsa. If you know that song, what who who the sings it and who the song what the song is, put it in the chat and I will send you a goodie. I'll send you something from my goodie bag. Who the who the sings it? Who the sings and it? Who the song and is? And what the song? Yeah, what the sings it and who the song <laughs> is? Good, good for you. <laughs> when I make stuff up on the fly, my brain goes crazy. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right, Justin hashtag Team Shield. Oh, we had a Team Judge question. Now we got a Team Shield question. Hey there, Bobby, Cool Daddy, Slick Breeze, Eric, The Truth, McCabe, One Time, and Robert, Thousand Rated Hair, McCall. Hey guys, I just wanted to address a couple things that I heard on the last podcast. Uh, I went to GBO this year for the first time ever. It was an unbelievable event. So smoothly ran. Doug Bierkis is is the absolute best TD I've ever seen. And all you guys that helped with every little thing. It was amazing. Awesome. The volunteers were amazing. Spotters, they were working so hard out there. It was a perfectly ran event, in my opinion. Second thing I want to address, somebody asked the other day about approaching a pro to be a caddy. I approached A.J. Risley as he was warming up for the feature card at GBO, and he let me be his caddy. He was the coolest guy, just super nice, told me that he just wanted me to keep them hyped a little bit high fives fist pumps it was the most awesome experience watching johnny mccray and watching the rest of the guys up front and personal i learned a ton just from that one round right there even though risley didn't play his best he kept a great attitude and it was just an unbelievable experience listen to the podcast every time you guys release one fantastic thanks keep it up Awesome. Thank you, Justin. And yeah, I mean, AJ, man, I'm biased because, you know, he's on our team. But even if he wasn't, because I, I would say this about a lot of other touring players who I like, but man, AJ is just good people, dude. Um, we've stayed together at a couple of events. He stayed at my house for GBO and things like that. And yeah, he's just he's just a good guy. And um, he's good people. And yeah, having having someone on the bag, even if it's not like for advice, if it's just, hey, just just keep me hype. Let's talk about something that's not disc golf. Um yeah, I, I benefit a lot from that. I know AJ does too, so that's very cool. Now, I said this before, and I just want to reiterate, don't be offended if a pro does happen to say or happen to say like nah, not man. nah, because some people just like to be in their own zone. Um, people are guessing at the song, Air Clamps to Tulsa Time, uh, Tulsa Time by Don Williams. The answer is incorrect. The name of the, the I'll give you a hint, uh, Tulsa is not in the name of the song. Trent it says, take not, me back by tinted windows. No. Okay, I don't. I don't know. Um, it, I, you got, you'll have to be from my, uh, when I was in high school, which was, would have been, uh, the late eighties to know this song. I'll give that to another clue. The late eighties. What did I say? No, you're good. Oh, late eighties. All right. So what do we got? Questions. We got one more speak pipe. This is well, from, oh. somebody on the board said they just submitted one. So we should refresh and see if, see if it'll come up. Oh, a uh, speak pipe. Yeah. Boing. There yep. we go. All right. So we got two more. Here we go. Yeah. It's, it's going to be good. Hey, Disc Golf Ensman crew, Jake from Cleveland here. Was wondering about discs, specifically in the DD lineup. Well, you've sent the question to the right place. If there was one that had the low speed turn of a Raider, the glide of an Escape, and a fairway driver. Thanks, guys. 
the, the low, low speed turn of a raider. Surely, you, surely you mean low speed fade. I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Does the raider have a low speed fade? Well, yeah. I mean, it finishes to the left. Well, sure, but it's like low speed. It's like most people call it high speed turn, low uh, high speed turn, and then low speed is where fade kicks in. Gotcha. When it's at the end of its flight. Gotcha. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So it was the hold on. It was the it was fate a, of a raider with the glide, glide of, of an, an escape, escape in a fairway driver form. Um, probably the probably the closest thing I'd say would be a getaway. Um, getaway is a nine speed that I think flies really super far. It's got great glide, and uh, yeah, good a uh, good finish to the left. We have a winner. He got it. I can't believe he got it. Jeffrey Chappelle, the heart of rock and roll by Huey, Huey Lewis, Lewis in the news. Yep. Nice. The heart of rock and roll. The heart of rock and roll is the beating. Yes, that is the correct answer. And it, and it, he really quickly says, he says different towns, and he says Tata Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Vanna B. Man, you nailed it. All right. So anyway, so uh, Jeffrey got it first. So we're gonna go with Jeffrey, right? I want to make sure Jeffrey Chappelle got That's it right. first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Jeffrey Chappelle, I want you to be logged into YouTube, take a screenshot, so I know it's you. Send that screenshot to Bobby at dynamicdiscs.com, and I'll get you a goodie out in the mail for you, probably tomorrow morning. Sweet. Last question from Speakpipe is this from is, Ty. Yeah, Tyler Brickley of uh, of Disc Golf Comedy. So oh, here we go. This is sure to be a banger. Here we go. Uh, yeah, could I get a number four? <laughs> yeah, with no dice onions, please. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, crap. This is the Disc Golf Answer Man podcast number. Sorry about that, guys. Thought it was something else. Hey, listen, as long as I have you, as long as we're here, um, I did have a question. I've been throwing actually quite a bit too good lately. I've noticed all my drives are just parking the basket. And uh, it's really embarrassing. My card mates are looking at me with, you know, jealousy in their eyes and whatever. Uh, so I disc down, you know, through mid ranges and uh, fairways and in some stable putters. Lately, I've been throwing minis, but I'm still parking every <laughs> single basket. And I'm just wondering, you know, do you have any way that I could maybe fit in more with my card? Uh, Bobby, this question isn't directed at you. I've seen how good you are lately. So, Robert, maybe you could help <laughs> fair, me out. Nice. I mean, we've seen, <laughs> we've all seen the videos. You know, obviously you've got this figured out. Dang so, it, dang it, uh, anything you guys could offer me, uh, as well as the number four with no dice onions, if you have one, would be great. Appreciate it, mates. Peace out. Kill me, Tyler. <laughs> Wait, I think it's. Did he want cheese on number four? I don't know. Oh, okay. There was only. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys don't follow Disc Golf Comedy uh, on YouTube, you need to go and subscribe to his channel. Tyler Brickley is, in my opinion, very funny. Uh, I think most people find him very funny as well. Um, you know, and the, really the only advice I have is maybe try uh, throwing with the opposite hand as much of blasphemy as that might be, you know. Learn learn what it's like to be like Zach Melton. And then, you know, since Disc Golf has gone so well for you already, you're probably going to excel at that with the opposite hand as well. And so you can kind of just rub that in, you know, Melton's face or Chris Clemens or absolutely pretty much everybody. So yeah, that's what I would do. There you go. There you go. You're welcome. You are welcome. We got any more questions? Nope. That is it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the regular disc golf answer man show. We have a couple topics we're going to talk about on the after after show, uh, show, show, uh, is there, there's no event this weekend. So no skip ace, correct? Uh yeah no skip base wait is there an event this weekend maybe maybe disc golf, maybe D glow is this weekend okay we'll we'll look that up here in a little bit and we'll talk about it on the after, it after next show, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I want to thank next everybody weekend. for sending those questions in we appreciate it um anything else we need to make sure people are reminded disc golf uh experience in Colorado this weekend we you still have time so if you're in the area it's worth a couple hour drive if you are close enough uh and you've got the, the weekend open or at least saturday open you want to come out and play that would be awesome um trilogy challenge is still going on so check that out trilogychallenge.com match play doubles bracket and women's doubles bracket uh disc golf match play .com. i said that already um what else we got oh you know what else we, what can, we got something that is happening this weekend is, yes is the dirty. ah the dirty. <laughs> you nailed it open <laughs> uh, um, the Tooney, we want to give a big shout out to everybody out in Finland. 
Uh, make sure you follow. I believe, uh, I think, I know, well, I know Eric and Tina Oakley are out there. So I'm yep. sure they're going to be doing some stuff probably on their on their Instagram stuff. But I think they're going to do a few little things for us. So make sure you follow us so you can check out what's happening over in Finland with the, uh, oh. how many did they end up with as far as players? Yeah, we can pick for, uh, we can pick for the Toonie. Oh, okay. Oh, we can pick for the Toonie? Toonie. Uh, Toonie. So we'll take a look at that at the After After Show show. But uh, shout out to Oakley's being out there. And I know that uh, Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, is going to be out there as well doing his disc golf guy stuff. So uh, make sure you follow all their channels to keep up with happening Sweet. at the Toonie. What's, what, any, okay. <laughs> it's just funny. Okay. All right. So we're going to sign off from here on the show. And then we'll be right back with the After After Show for the YouTubers. And YouTubers, get your questions in. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Doc said, what would we need to, to pay to have Bobby commentary with Finnish town names and players' names? That would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, did y'all see? By the way, since we were talking about the, uh, the Finnish. Hey. Uh, oh, this isn't working. That's disappointing. Go ahead. Since we were talking about the Finnish stuff earlier, did you see Bobby cop out and not read Finnish on the video? What a cop out. You're a Everyone cop out. else is struggling through their Finnish like Test. normal One, two, people. Three. What's the deal it's here? the worst, man. Or are you trying to get your after I'm trying to get my, my effect here, my effect going. Here we go. There it is. All right. So we're going to do this effect. We're ready for the intro to the After After Show. Yes. Welcome to the After After Show Show. Thank you. And we did it. All right, so welcome to the After After Show Show. Where we're a little more relaxed. We talk a little disc golf and a little bit of other things. I have a few topics I was wanting to discuss to get Robert's thoughts on them. Yep. Our backs actually touch the back of our chairs this time, yes, which yes. is nice. Yes, which is a nice. I don't know if y'all had noticed, but nice like, little relief on my back. That is yeah. for sure. Hey, you we, know what I want to get? Up, we sit up like this the whole time. Hold on, let me see if I can show you what my back looks like. This is this is the whole show like this. Yeah, see, see the space right there. That's yeah, and that gets uncomfortable after just, a while. Hey, I'm, we're here for you guys. Okay. Okay. So if you, for the audio listeners, there's probably about four or five inches between the back, seat back and Robert's back. Because you have to sit up in these chairs. Yeah, so you you know, so, so you look, look okay presentable. On. But now that we're in the uh, after after show show, we don't care about how we look. Nah, never heard about it. So uh, here's uh, so I've been thinking about those. Uh, it's now called chirp wheels, but it used to be called plexus wheels. Okay, I don't know anything about. Okay, it. so there are those there's those wheels that uh, people roll on their back for uh, back relief. Okay. And I've been thinking about getting them. Now you can get a three pack for one hundred and nineteen dollars. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Seen um, them. So Seen yeah, them. they look. They almost look like super, 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 super low profile rims. Yeah. Or tires. Like the tire that would like go the on ones you normally see on a Honda Civic. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, basically just. Civic have tires. you ever seen Fast and Furious? They literally These are use those. those. Yeah. So anyway, um, so you roll on them. They're supposed to like really open up your your back and then your uh, your hips. Uh, it's supposed to kind of open them up. And of course, not nah, obviously. I don't know all the specific medical stuff, but you know when you open up your vertebrae and your back, it releases some stuff that's really good for you. Yeah, good. So anyway, I've been thinking about getting that because I've been having a little bit of lower back pain. And if anybody really? on YouTube has uh, has one of these, let me know. Uh, Bobby, check YouTube for you. Uh, yes, I've been watching. So I have actually Doc Zen have been watching some reviews. I'm just trying to figure out if I really want to spend that much money, but. Um, it seems uh, now I have watched like they probably were paid reviews or at least on the site. So I probably need to dig in a little bit more and find people that are a little more unbiased opinions. OK, so here's what I want to talk about. Here's the first thing I want to talk about. Let's talk about some things. All right. We had a poll on YouTube. So our YouTubers should be uh, uh, hooked into this. Um, of course, on our YouTube channel, on the community section, we can post pictures and post things and we, one of the things we like to post is polls to get y'all's opinion and then kind of discuss it um, so if you don't follow us on youtube please do that now go ahead and just like it or well subscribe to our page make sure you tap that bell so you get notified when we go live but you can also participate in our polls and this one we have 2.9 thousand votes oh wait did we talk about this one already i thought i put another one 
I don't remember. But is this the painted lines with flags? Yeah. How do, how do you? But Johnny in the chat said, "Spend money." What are we talking about? <laughs> that's, Did we talk about this? That's kind of how the, I go about things too, Johnny. <laughs> no, this was six days ago, so we wouldn't have talked yeah, about that, it. Yeah, we, we said we were going to put it out that's last right. week. That's right. So yeah. we put the poll out. How do you prefer your out of bounds to be marked? The choices were painted line with flags, okay. rope, yes. stakes, where that's Only. just the stakes sticking out of the ground, or natural, for example, the water line or the parking lot edge. The one that got the least amount of votes at 4% was stakes. The next at 12% was rope. And then natural was at 39% and painted lines with flags with 45%. Does any of that surprise you, Robert? No. No, I think uh, so many of the people who voted for natural are, I would kind of be surprised if a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of tournament players voted for natural just because it's so hard to determine. You know, um, I prefer paint with flags, but natural is fine with me as well. Um, as long as it's consistent across the board and 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 as long as it's posted ahead of time or, or given to you in your player uh, in your player book or uh, caddy book or whatever it is, man, I don't you call the OB what it's going to be. And then I just I just need to play according to that. That's it. Well, it's interesting that you said that because someone said actually they actually says they prefer natural. If you need a little if you need a line paint with flags i just don't like when my i see my shot land a foot from the water but it is still ob because of a painted line i get it i get that it's it's frustrating yet no don't matter what if you, yeah if you go ob but if you practice the course you know that the line is a foot ob so you've got to throw with that in mind you got to shape your shot so you don't go ob so the, i can understand being frustrated but you can't be mad at that way of doing it because just because the 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 line is not where the water is you got to play the course the way the course is set up. I didn't vote for streaks, but they're easy to set up and maintain. Or stakes, I'm sorry. Uh, for an event, I'd prefer something more, but for everyday play, stakes are fine. Well, sure, yeah. yeah. I guess I should have specified, yeah, Is if this is for like an A tier or B tier or a tournament. I'd rather spend the time it takes to paint lines, place flags, and, inst and instead properly manicure grass. Tree limbs, etc. Yeah, lines and flags are great, but disc golf isn't popular like real golf. Hope the changes that changes soon. Disc golf is so much more fun to watch than regular golf. Mm. I guess I don't get the what does popularity have to do with taking the time to paint the lines? I think they're just you know. He's just saying. I, I think there's thought thought that they're not related. I think. Well, he says, but disc golf isn't popular like real golf. I don't know. I mean, I would think if you want your your uh, your event to be prestigious or of good quality, you would want to have the lines. Prestigious. Yep. Presti the prestige. Uh, someone says build a wall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just more easy to see white paint, but for water or send or sand trap, no line needed. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me ask you this. Well, I guess this doesn't really matter. I mean, what if you practice? And it rained so heavy that the water, there was a pond or a creek that the water rose. Yeah. And now the OB has changed. Right. I mean, I guess I would, I mean, if you got a painted lines, it would go over the paint anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's not, that's not a non-fact. That's not a good example. But, but uh, everyone plays the same regardless, you know. True. What if, what if, what if the rain, what if it, what if you teed off at nine in the morning and it rains super hard during lunch, and then at 3 p.m. you teed off the another yeah. person teed off, and the OB is different. Then that sucks. But that's just nature, right? Yeah, that's part of it. That's part of that's part of the problem with tee times. It's not always going to be the same. Paul says I prefer less artificial OB. Going off the fairway into tall grass or thick trees and shrubs can be punishment enough. Having said that, I recognize the need for artificial OB for safety's sake. I think it contributes to the the democratic ideals of the sport to have members of a card decide whether a disc is out or in. Sure. Uh, I, I also think, and that brought up one of the other reasons I think a bunch of people voted for natural is that I think when they hear that, they probably think like painting a woods line OB or yeah. painting something that isn't necessarily like that. Maybe it would have been more difficult if you didn't paint it and you had to play out from there. Maybe they thought that too. I don't know, man. I don't know. 
I think stakes really bring out the best of both worlds. I think that having obviously marked fairways, demeanors, newer players' skills. This is from Mark. When the experienced players are completely aware, their shot went OP. Stakes are also much easier for the courses to put in and maintain, allowing course funds to be used in a more impactful way. Uh, for example, T's uh, B baskets, excluding, I think he meant, etc. cetera. Uh, I also love leaving decisions to the players on the card unless it's clearly OB, play it. Interesting, interesting. So that's kind of our little poll. Thank you get to the nearly 3,000 people that voted. Uh, we'll, I'll try to figure out another poll, and we'll have that posted on YouTube. So if you want to be part of the discussion, put your comments and make your uh, opinion be heard. We got any questions on the chat before we go to the next subject I want to talk about? Let me scroll back up just a little bit here. Uh, Cody says, has anyone broken their phone because of a bogus spit out on Disc Golf Valley? Yeah, me neither. I've had some really terrible spit outs. Ones that I just typed to Johnny V. Ones that seem like they take like five seconds that hangs around in the chains and it's like it's in there, but you can tell it's still moving and then it falls out. It's just hateful. Uh, Mailbox says, any DD players making it to Maple Hill this year? Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a lot of DD players at Maple Hill. Probably most of our touring players will be there. Um, still scrolling on up. Greldick says, um, are DD players allowed to take other sponsors as well? Example, pound bags, New Balance shoes, etc. cetera. Uh, DD players can have some other sponsors as long as they don't compete with our core products. That's one of our, um, it's one of our requirements. And we call our core products apparel, discs, and bags. And so uh, we don't want other companies to sponsor our players in that uh, in that fashion, but like, uh, for example, Paige Pierce and Paige Biericas are both sponsored by Keen Footwear. We don't have shoes. We don't intend to make shoes. Ever again. So, yeah. So um, them having a, a footwear sponsor, no problem at all. We are excited for them to have it. So yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's about that so far. All right, we're going to go on to the next subject because I actually have to leave here in a little bit because Sebastian has an, I made a vet appointment because those bites I noticed that. Oh, yeah. Or not bites, but the little bumps. The, the other night, I was just kind of like just petting him and stuff, and he kind of like 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 it, like it he didn't like it as much. So right. I looked at him. They have like little pus in them. Mm. So I'm gonna have, we're going to have the vet what look time, at him. What time do you have that? It's at 4.15, so we've got Okay, time. we got a little bit. Okay. Uh, question for Bobby. Do you think it is worthwhile for the PDJ to pay for master's coverage? Oh, Johnny, really put me on the spot, man. <sighs> now I'm going to make a bunch of master's, man. Well, he said uh, this... Dixon posted earlier like a meme that said it was in his hand. It said hard to swallow pills and the pills in the hand say, um, well, I'll, I'll just read it to you. Hold on yeah, just go a second for it. because uh, I want to get it right here. Yeah, we want to make sure we quote. So we're going to answer that question, but I want to hear what Dixon said. Real yeah, quick to it's the, here's here's the meme. It says hard, hard to swallow pills. Not enough people care about FPO or master's coverage to justify the expense. Is uh, Dixon saying he agrees with that or doesn't agree with that? No, I think he's, I think he's just putting that out there for as something for people to discuss. Uh, uh, so Doc said, "No, the shoes are not my idea." Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, I've been doing disc golf media for about ten years now, um, and certainly there are trends and. Uh, there's so much going on that you have to, you to in my, now this is just talking from my world. In my world, we have to figure out what is worth our time to cover. Right. Because we only have so many cameras and so many media people. Correct. We only have, the resources are, are, are limited um, and there's a lot of things that can be covered. So in the grand scheme of things, I, I don't think the masters would bring the views that would warrant spending money on it. Oof, I know it's going to make people, people mad. Or some people upset or, or don't like that opinion. But the thing is, is I can't change that. I can't change that. Right. Just because I make a video doesn't mean, just because I go cover the Masters doesn't mean enough people are going to watch it to make right. it worth it. You, you, the viewers, are the one that, that causes these to happen, right? It's not me. It's you, the viewers, because we've done Masters before. Um, we've covered other things. We've done other things before, but you made the choice to either watch it or not watch it and not enough of you made the choice to make it worth it yeah um yeah that's the difficulty of it especially if let's say you know there's there are some really good film crews um in disc golf right now and a lot of times most of them are at the same event and then you'll have you'll have some of the other ones at other events but um 
to have MPO and FPO coverage, I think, is a no-brainer. Um, it's it's not a surprise, uh, maybe not a surprise, but I, I think most people wouldn't be surprised to find out that the MPO coverage gets more views than the FPO coverage, just because I think the vast majority of um, people who watch disc golf on the internet are males. Whether that's whether that's right or wrong is is beside the point. That's just how it is, yeah. and so I think they want to watch the people who they would be competing with, who they aspire to be. Same goes for females, but just in a smaller, um, just in a smaller group because there just aren't as many of them. Um, on the masters side, yeah, that's a that's a tough one. I I think it's worth featuring uh, some of the masters who are at the who are at the top of their game, especially for the uh, for the PDGA to uh, to sponsor that. Um, as, maybe that changes our, the question. Maybe as maybe, our organizing body, I I do think that's that makes fair. sense. That's fair. So so I did kind of take that out of the equation of should PDJ pay for it. So yes, I could see an argument for PDGA stepping up to pay for it. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's get to the question that I want to talk about. This is going to be some controversy. So I was listening to uh, the Upshot. It's a, a good uh, a podcast by the guys over at Alti World, Charlie. Eisen, is it Eisenwood or Eisenhood? Eisenhood. Eisenhood. And Jamie Thomas. Uh, Jamie Thomas is a good... Uh, what? Analyst of the game. There you go, okay. I was thinking of the word analytics. Yeah, right. But couldn't, an put, analyst, the, but couldn't put the person name to right. it. Right. Yeah. So he is very good at analyzing the game, and I enjoy listening to him, and, and Charlie as well. Yeah. So anyway, I was listening to one of their episodes, and they brought up something that I was thought was interesting. Uh, a Aaron Howard had put together, and then and I haven't read the articles, but there's four parts to the articles. At least I see part four here. The title of it is "Drive for Dough, Putt for Show." Well, we all know the old adage. The old drive adage is "Drive for Show, Putt for Dough." Yep. And that's something that we preached on here. People are like distance, distance. We're like, don't worry about distance as much as putting. Do the putting. Well. That was based on a lot of conjecture. Is that the right word? Yep. That, in other words, or anecdotal where it's just what we felt, what we experienced, what we, we witnessed. But now that the good folks at UDISC, the amazing, very intelligent, smart guys at UDISC, now have a lot of stats, things that we didn't have, at least not to the degree we have now, right? Mm -hmm. The stats of circle, one, well, first it was just, it was just circle one. Circle one. Now it's circle one and circle one X putting, right? Right. So anyways, and circle one X is the one we look at the most. And so we have a lot of data, and data does data doesn't lie. According to his analysis of the data, it actually should be drive for dough and putt for show. In other words, someone could be good at putting, and their putting is good, but the one that's are the ones that are on top are better at driving and and. Now, I didn't listen all of it to it, so I don't know if they got into specific accuracy, but I got to imagine that uh, if you can throw far and accurate, then you're ready for your putt. You don't have to, you know, you know, obviously you can park it and you're ready for your putt. So, right. but I thought it was really interesting. If you guys, if you're like a numbers nerd and a data nerd, go to Alti World Disc Golf and look for that series and read it. And I, I should have sent this to you, or I just listened to it no, last night. No, but I'm familiar with it. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on that? That. For years, it's been you got to worry about your putting, but this data is now proving out that it's not about the putting; it's about your drives. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So since UDISC has come about and we've had more access to statistics like this, the Circle One and yeah, Circle One X and Circle Two putting. Um, usually, the people who do well in the field do well in those things, right? They they have a high percentage, um, but I'm pretty sure that the main factor that is usually like the, the thing that is most telling for the people who are going to be highest in the tournament is circle two and regulation, circle one and circle two and regulation driving stats. Um, and basically, if you're unfamiliar with statistics, um, circle w circle one and circle two and regulation means that if it's on a par three, then in regulation means that you've reached either circle two or circle one in uh, two throws less than the par which means that you have a putt for birdie. Whether it's a good putt or a bad putt doesn't matter. That's a statistic in and of itself. It's just like it's just like golf, greens and regulation. This is the same sort of thing. So if it's a par four, 
reaching circle two in regulation means that you are inside 66 or so, really close to that, feet in two shots. So you'll be putting for birdie. Um, and that's usually the statistic that indicates where the top or, or who the top finishers are going to be. Um, and I mean, it, it makes sense when you think about it, like uh, kind of like they're talking about, like, here's a good example, uh, Bobby. I went to Kansas City Wide Open, right? And we played Waterworks the first day. And I made 100% of my putts inside the circle, and I made two of my four outside the circle. And yet I was seven shots off of Macbeth's round, mm -hmm. who I don't think he missed any inside the circle, but he missed one outside that made him uh, that, that sent him OB. Right. But he shot 11 under. I shot four under because he was getting so many more opportunities to score. Yeah. That even if he would have missed a bunch of putts, he could have putted 50% inside the circle and still beat me on that round. Right. And so, yes, it it's like you do have to be able to seal the deal once you get to the green. But the assumption now is that players are good enough putters that they're not going to miss, especially at the top level. They're not going to miss so many putts that it makes that big of a difference. The biggest difference is whether they're getting opportunities at those putts. And so, yeah, that's been a really interesting statistic to see from. Yeah, uh, from I thought that was pretty. Yeah. If you guys really like that, check that out. The other thing that I brought up is that this is an argument for the whole uh um, what's hurting the growth of our sport or allowing players to excel, 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 excel at such a rapid pace is because of the design of our courses. And that's what some of these stats might be pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're playing, I think across the board, really difficult courses. Um, and so, yeah, driving is super important. Yeah. So on the behalf of myself, I apologize if I ever shamed you. Shame. Shame. Oh, you're not there yet on no. on the show. Uh -huh. um, if I ever uh, made you feel bad for learn, wanting to learn how to drive better, but drive. I know I'm not. I've never said not to learn how to drive. No, but it's it's. Uh, all right. So here's he, he, okay. So here's part of the difficulty. So you are a new player to disc golf, right? And you learn to throw about 250 feet, but you make very very few putts, right? Um, then you increase your driving distance a little and you're still making fewer putts. At some point, you need to get to a certain standard of putting where you can at least convert sometimes, right? Where you can at least make some birdies or, or you know, guarantee some pars. Um, but when you're at the very top level, everybody can throw 500 feet and everybody can putt. So it's giving yourselves those opportunities to do so. That's what kind of separates them. When you're not at the very, very top level, Putting and driving are, I mean, obviously they're still super important at the top level, but they're, they're going to be more of a separator, especially putting is going to be more of a separator, not quite at the top level because not there's not going to be so many like perfect throwers that they're 80% circle two percentage. So all they need to do is make half of their putts to shoot a really good round. So it's, it's not incorrect to say if you're already throwing 400 with accuracy that you should practice putting. You should definitely do that. Uh, but if you're at the point where you're pretty good at both of those, working on driving accuracy and increasing that distance, yeah, that's going to help you. There you go. So anyway, I thought it was interesting. Someone said, did, did this play out uh, for the FPO division? Um, I did not, like I said, I did not read any of the articles. I didn't even listen. Take a look. I didn't even get a chance to listen to the entire podcast. Uh, I was, I can't remember, I was on my way home or something like that. I can almost guarantee that Circle 2 and regulation is going to be uh, something really important. For, for FPO, mm -hmm. hold on, I'll, I'll, I'm almost there. Okay, let's go to uh, let's go to this last weekend. Ledgestone Insurance Open, FPO, and player stats. All right, so we'll take a look. Um, let, let's first take a look at Circle One X putting. So the people who putted best Circle One X this weekend, first in the field, Missy Gannon, eighty nine percent, which is by the way way better than I put it this weekend. But Missy is a great putter. Oh, she's a fantastic putter. Like she she jams putts. Yeah, she does. She's awesome. 89%. Then Christina Linthicum, 86%. Christine Jennings, 82%. Deanne Carey, 78 And then uh, rounding out the top five tied were Holly Finley and Tiger Borth, uh, uh, 75%. But those people didn't finish in the top five. Well, Missy finished uh, tied for fifth. But the rest of them didn't finish in the top five. Um, same for circle two putting. Uh, well, oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's cool. Um, 
Paige Pierce uh, finished first on the week, circle two putting, 33%. Katrina Allen, 29%. But their circle one X percentages were fairly low compared to the other competitors. 68% for Paige, 64% for Katrina. But then if you move over to circle two in regulation, you see the top four finishers at the event are the top four for circle two in regulation. Jennifer Allen, Katrina Allen, Haley King, Paige Pierce. They're all 74 or higher percent, Jennifer Allen being 80%. Then circle then circle one in regulation, same four finishers, just in a different order. Paige Pierce, 59%. Jennifer Allen, 52. Haley King, 50. And Katrina Allen, 48. So yeah, I mean, driving driving statistics are super important, not just in the uh, women's field, but or not just in the men's, but also in the women's. Um, I mean, we can look at the men's too. Circle one X, Matt Bell, 100%. Nathan Queen, 100%. Matt Dollar, 100%. Ricky Wysocki, Corey Ellis trailing behind. Paul McBeth, 96%. So great great shows by those gentlemen. Uh, but then get, get over to circle two in regulation. One, Paul McBeth. Two, Nathan Queen, who had a, a fantastic second round. Um, number three, Ricky Wysocki. Number four, Emerson Keith. Number five, Garrett Gerthy. Um, Nathan Queen finished tied for 21st because he had a really rough first round. But everybody else is inside the top six. And then after that, Kevin Jones, Simon Lazat, Jake Lobert, leaders in circle two in regulation. Move over to circle one. Paul McBeth's in the lead as well. And then you've got the top four finishers right there. McBeth, Wysocki, Garrett Gerthy, Kevin Jones. So, yeah, driving is vitally important, especially at the top level. There you go. Uh, it, yeah. it is like I love it, UDISC for that reason. Yeah. We, if you don't follow UDISC and you're a numbers guy, you are missing out because there's a lot of data there to crunch yes and uh figure out so all right real quick we got a few minutes uh before i gotta take off let's pick our have our picks for dynamic disc toonie sponsored by latitude 64 we're doing this over at skipace.com uh johnny v's put that together and it's so cool to be able to do stuff like this uh if you're into uh, the fantasy sports thing make sure you join up at skipace.com you can join with your email you can join with your social media accounts uh, and then of course go to leagues and join the uh, do, go to join league. Then type in DGAM and then use the code DGAM. And we like to give out prizes if you beat us, which you will net. Yes, we did. You can beat us very easily. So let's go with our picks number one. Are we just going to go with some of the obvious ones? Yeah, you can put eagle in. Eagles, eagles. Our pick number one. Pick number two. Seppo or Simon. Seppo. Pick number three. Well, let's go over to women. Hold on. No, this is easy. Kristen Tatar. We can we can pick whoever we want. You definitely should pick Kristen. Oh, she course, will probably yes. win the event. Yeah. I think Kristen is undefeated this year, by the way. Oh, for real? Yeah, she's a Latitude 64 sponsored player she, from Estonia, and well, she is bad to the bone. When I watch, she has such smooth accuracy. That's the biggest thing that I noticed with her. Mm -hmm. She can cut through. Backhand and forehand. Yes. Very good player. Yeah, I think, I think you can pick the top two females in the field, Kristen and... Uh, now, View is from, oh man, where is she from? I wanted to say Thailand, but I don't think that's correct. That is literally a foreign name I can say very easy. The first name, View. View, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's probably not It's probably not actually pronounced that way. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I think you can drop those two in. View. I think those are our... Uh, All right, that leaves us with 2036. Uh, oh, she is from Thailand. Mm, I win. Nice. Okay, sweet. Um, okay, I think you have Seppo in there. I would drop in um, uh, Leo Pironen. 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 Ten ten. Uh, he is one of the. I don't know if he's defending this year, but the Finnish champion. Just he's he is an incredible disc golfer. And then uh, for the last pick, I'm gonna pick Vino Makela. Bino, there's a lot of ooplas going on there. Umla, umlauts, umlauts, <laughs> umla. Um, there's a lot of oopala. Yes, uh, and umla. I feel a little bad leaving my boy um, Timo Nissanen out as well as Eric Oakley. I think they're both going to have. Not me. We're we're going to have great finishes there. They listen to the podcast um, sometimes, so I just want the Oakleys to know and Spout to know. I'm going to take him, not me. I'm going to take the Europeans this year. Who are we going to put for our alternate? Uh, I mean, you can pick a really good alternate. Um, Nicholas Antila. I like. Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Silver Lat. Lat. Ah, Silver Lat. Who is? Uh, are they also Latitude? Are they married uh, or boyfriend just, girlfriend? Boyfriend girlfriend with Kristen Tata. Yep. And for the uh, alternate for women's. Mm. 
Katka Bodava. <laughs> Maris Perendi. <laughs> Katka Bodava. Jenny Eskelenin. Bodava. <laughs> Tina Okeli. <laughs> that one, you almost got it. Tina Okeli. I'll take uh, I'll take Sophie just based purely on rating. Yeah. Wait, I want to say Bioleke. Yeah, that's probably pretty close. Okay. There you All go. right, there we go. We did it. We did it. Save pick. So, right, we're in there. So make sure you go there. You only got one day left if you haven't put it in yet for the Toonie out in uh, Finland. Uh, the uh, event is 27th through 29th. So, and of course, we wish everybody the best of luck over there, the competitors. Uh, yeah. So, all right, I got to wrap things up because I got to get going. Got to get the little pooch to the vet. Thank you guys for the after after show. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we'll try to find a. Hey, here, uh, well. Hey. Go to the Facebook group on Disc Golf Ranch Man. And if there's a, if there's some topics you want us to discuss on the after after show, be it tacos, be it uh, disc golf, whatever it is, just, you know, make it something we can actually talk about. Don't say, you know, something silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. But put something out there and, and put say, say, hey, I want you guys to discuss this on the after after show. Put it out there and we'll, we'll see if we can discuss it on the next one. So, But thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.